Okay, this is my standard CTC bizzer. All I've done with it is add the glass bed and as I mentioned last time I've upgraded the extruder to one of these with the springy springy things on. I'm going to install today my uh, flexion extruder which uh, just came in the post yesterday and although I won't go through the ins and outs of installing it I have to say that uh, as Keats or was it um, or was it uh, Ch uh, Willy Wonka who said a thing of beauty is a joy forever he wasn't wrong this thing really is a thing of beauty it comes in this beautiful case let me see if I can focus it comes in this beautiful case with all the parts in it it's, uh, it is really rather lovely it comes with one extru one one nozzle built on and three other nozzles spare tube wrenches spare brushes to clean the the pinch roller the the support bar and even a lovely little sticker as a reminder to what setting to set the um, the tension the um, the extruder pressure to um, it's really really rather beautiful and also as an engineer which is what I am surprisingly enough um, I can say that the build quality of this is really beautiful I can't really show you this on on camera but every hole is properly countersunk um, the finish on the machining is is better than you would expect from from most vendors the the quality of the machining is first rate the attention to detail is incredible there's a little brass sleeve in the uh, in the hot end where the uh, where the heater goes that brass sleeve is um, so you can fit two different sizes of heater you can remove it and fit a slightly larger one or or leave it in there if you have a if you have a smaller diameter one I'm saying everything about it including the 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 etching on the on the extruder nozzles is it's all really rather lovely but um, I'm going to fit this soon and uh, to El Cheapo here and see if it this is as close as I can get you and see if it uh, see if it improves my flip printing with with flexies okay. Okay, just fit my hurt, hit my first significant problem. Um, this is the the I'm not sure what to call it hot end support bar for the um, for the flexion, and this is the original from the uh, CTC Bizzer. You can see that the holes for the for the hot end are considerably smaller in this than they are in the in the uh, flexion. Also. Um, the offset of the hole. This the the original has this has these holes to the front to the front of the of the plate, whereas this one has them to the rear. Also, the fixing holes on here are slightly um, at a different pitch to the originals. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fix this yet. I've got a couple of ideas. I'll come back when I've got one. Um, but uh, yes, okay. I'll let you know. Okay, quick update. What I decided to do was, for now, not use the the bar that came with the with the flexion, but to use my original bar, which I've drilled out to. I think it's five sixteenths. Why can't you Americans get your head around metric stuff? Look, the rest of the world's changed. Why can't you? Um, this should do the job with luck. OK, well I'll wait for this thing to uh, warm up um, before I try and do the bed. I've done it. I've managed to get the darn thing fitted. You can see it there. It looks rather beautiful. Um, I wouldn't call this a, a, le a learner's mod. Um, this took some, some engineering. Um, it took the drilling of the 
original crossbar to suit the um, the flexion extruder head which was 5 16 of an inch instead of I think 6 mil for the original one that might be because I've got a, a mark 8 or 9 extruder instead of a instead of a mark 10 um, hot end um, also I had to um, open up the hole in the heat sink the the heat sink on these just in there the hole is considerably too small for the size of the um, spur gear the the um, reflection drive gear so that took a fair bit of um, dremeling to get that to clear I don't suppose you can see it down in there but down in there you've got there you go, you just about see it, you can see the, the drive gear that wasn't clearing through the hole in the um, in the heat sink, but it does now so I'm just waiting for all the temperatures to to equalise before we attempt a 3D print, I've loaded it with, with filament and it's um, done that filament perfectly well um, no skipping during the load, it was beautiful We'll see. If I just zoom in, you can also see the rather beautiful quality knurling and numbers on those. On the adjustment wheel there. The whole thing is rather gorgeous. There. Well. I'm printing a 20mm calibration box and uh, all seems to be going well at the moment. It looks pretty good, it's not lifting on the corners, it's nice and even and square so far. That's a good sign. Okay, she's just finished printing the 20mm calibration block. Let's have a measure just out of interest. And it is Twenty point one. That's close enough for me. And that way. Twenty point two. That's close enough for me. And on the top, it looks pretty, pretty even. No big sink marks. I only printed it with ten percent. I think in fill. No big sink marks. It's all nice and square and even pleased with that. So here it is printing a 20mm calibration block in flexible TPU. This is Sane Smart brand which is a cheap Chinese job. Um, it's 95 sure so I've set the the um, set the, the extruder to, to number two and it appears to be doing everything just fine so far. I'll um, update you again when it's finished and we'll have another measure. OK, this is my 20mm cal block from the uh, same smart flexible TPU and you can see this one is pretty reasonable. There's some sinking between the where you can see the, the, the build lines inside but if I compare that to my previous attempt with my normal extruder you can see that the, the finish on the outside is much smoother on this one than it is on this. This is almost looks like it's matte. It's difficult to see the, the difference. It's much more even here. And also this one was done with the higher infill but still there's, there's holes in the top whereas this has no holes just a little bit of sink mark. I'm sure if I'd done it at the same 20 or 30 percent infill that this one was done with, it would have been much better. So good. I'm very pleased with that. Worth the money. So this is the object of the exercise. Um, at Christmas, I bought my daughter a, a new mobile phone, and I thought she might appreciate something a bit unusual and a bit off the wall. However, it would appear that you can't buy any accessories for a Marshall London. Although it's a cool phone, you can't get to nice cases. So I set about to, to make one. 
and this is hopefully doing the job. So in the end, would I recommend the flexion extruder for somebody with a CTC Visa printer? Well, if you enjoy a bit of engineering and you like that a little bit of a challenge, yes, it, it's now it's on there and it's, and it's fitted. It appears to be working really well. It's extruding smoothly. The, the print isn't, in, isn't lifting, um, even though it's a large flat area. Um, there's no skipping or jumping from the extruder I can hear at all. It's, it's absolutely smooth. Um, but it was a bit of a better fit, as I said. You do need to do a little bit of engineering. You'll need to, to drill out the, um, the support block or shim your existing extruder to fit the, the supplied support block. As I said, I chose to drill to drill out the original one. Um, they're to a penny if I wrecked it. So what you can pick those up from from one how for you know 15 quid whatever. Um, and the um, fan issue with the um, with the extruder um, drive gear fouling on the heatsink is a bit of a problem. It took quite a bit of mashing of uh, of Dremel to to get that clear. Um, but all those problems aside, it appears to be working really well. So, if you like a bit of a challenge and you've got one of these printers, yeah, hell, why not go for it? It's great. It's a good model.